Thanks again so much for joining us this week. We're probably going to have a couple weeks break as I'll be traveling in the United States, especially visiting our older son and family there in Idaho. To get on an airplane, you have to be double vaccinated. You have to take a test within three days. I had mine, came up negative. So I've been sort of dreaming and hoping for this trip for over a year. And now it's become a reality. I especially uh, wanted to mention the fact that when we offer a book free, as I have my book, Toxic uh, Confessions of a Toxic Perfectionist, um, there's no strings attached. You will not be added to any database and be sent more uh, uh, literature unless you request it. But I really would love to send those of you involved with this blog um, some of these books that I mentioned in the past, especially also Calvary. This is the first time you're with us. We we talked about uh, climate change and mentioned this new leaflet, which I'm hoping will get distributed uh, widely on the climate change, internal climate change. I, I believe no matter what your philosophy or religion is, you will find what I share in this leaflet so incredibly relevant. And I would love to send you uh, one or more copies. I just had the privilege this afternoon of getting some time with an old friend, Terry Ascott, who after his years on OM uh, became the founder of SAT7. And you can Google and get information about SAT7, one of the most amazing television ministries in all the Middle East, including as far out as Afghanistan. And it was so exhilarating. Uh, to get time uh, time with him. His biography has just also been uh, published, quite a large book. I've just started into it. And it's always exciting to read about people who were on Operation Mobilization when they were younger, and then it broadened out into other ministries. In fact, about 200 different organizations, ministries, tra trace their birth back to often their founder uh, being on OM. And we hope in different uh, times together that I'll be able to mention that some of these ministries. Today, I especially want to talk about emotion. I remember when one of my helpers, that's someone who travels with me for a whole year, Matthew Elliott, went off to Aberdeen University to study theology. And his thesis ended up a book called Feeling. And I read part of it, and of course, we've met up since then, and I'm convinced that what he had to say uh, was so relevant. And I think one of the mistakes we made, and I'm very honest about not only my own mistakes, but some of the mistakes we made as an organization, I think are linked with a lack of realize, realizing how important feelings are. And through God's grace awakening, and a greater understanding of the scriptures um, and helped by many different books, uh, we became more sensitive to people's feelings. And I read an article a long time ago. It was so important. I actually wrote it in this Bible that I used for about 20 years. It's now completely come apart. Uh, I don't use it anymore, but I have all these quotations uh, written here. And this quotation is, is the heart of what I want to try to share at this time. It's, it's written by a man named William Menninger, um, who, who may have not been a Christian, I don't know. But we can, we can learn truth from many, many sources. It's called emotional maturity. And he gives seven, seven points to emotional maturity. I'm not going to comment on them. I just want to read them. Number one, the ability to deal constructively with reality. Wow, what a message. The ability to deal constructively with reality. And we're facing that right now with COVID and many other things going wrong on planet Earth. Number two, the capacity to adopt to change. Yes, change is the name of the game. How are you doing? And one of the reasons we have this blog is to help people emotionally and mentally to adjust 
to change because there's probably more change coming. And I can assure you as you get older, as in my case, there are changes that you may have never expected. Number three, a relative freedom from symptoms that are produced by tension and anxiety. I thank the Lord for a number of books I've read that helped me deal with anxiety. Uh, one about the philosophy of Jesus and mental health. The other, How to Win Over Worry and Care by John Haggai. And then, of course, many, many uh, vital scriptures. Let me just read that again. Relative freedom from symptoms that are produced by tensions and anxieties. Number four, the capacity to find more satisfaction from giving than from receiving. Of course, we all know that verse from the Bible, it's more blessed to give than receive. And I've had the privilege of fellowship with generous people. They are surely a minority group on planet Earth. And the amount of money that people are just sitting on in these days, when there's so many desperate needs, including many life and death situations, is a great mystery to me. But obviously, they've never learned this particular reality. The capacity to find more satisfaction from giving than receiving. Number five, the capacity to relate to other people in a consistent manner with mutual satisfaction and helpfulness. So beautifully, so beautifully put. Number six, the capacity to supplement, to supplement, to direct one's instinctive hostile energy into creative and constructive outlets. It was a great help in my own life when even as a teenager, I realized that there was a hostility in me. It would come out sometimes in my driving, it would come out in sporting, in sports events, and to learn how to get a handle on that was a great help in my pilgrimage. And then number seven, the capacity to love. In our blog about transformation, and our blog about internal climate change, of course, the core value is love. And that scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, all about love is certainly one of the most important pieces of literature ever, ever written. I hope you'll take time to reflect on those seven points that I have shared with you. If somehow you lost them in the process, uh, you can email me and I would be happy. I'm so sad or sorry that last week uh, I held this upside down, but I think I've got it right this time. This is my email address. Anything I mention that I can give free or any connection, um, I will give personal attention. So I do look forward to hearing from you. As news comes in from around the world, we respond emotionally to it. And one of the emotions that the Lord has really helped me to get a hold of in my life is handling so much sadness. And I do follow the news in about six or seven different news sources, plus some newspapers and other sources, including friends like friends who are actually living in Kabul and people I know and people I trust. And of course, there's a lot of sadness. We think right now of the uh, kidnapping crisis going on in Haiti. We think of the volcano, unbelievable continuing overflow in Las Palmas. We think of the ongoing complexity in Yemen and Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, Eritrea, Ethiopia. Uh, we're involved in most of these nations, especially attempting to raise finance to often help people in life and death situations. 
Huge numbers of children die every day just because of the global water crisis. Um, praise God for organizations that are doing something about that. They made enormous steps forward, but the problem is so huge. It's so widespread. A lot of people, a lot of children are still left out. We rejoice that we had word last week that there's finally some kind of vaccination that can prevent malaria, especially among children. So many children die of malaria. And this is not 100%, but combined with other medication, it can get very near uh, 90% to save the lives of these precious children. This is a huge burden on my own heart and the sadness from the news that I received could weigh me down if it wasn't for understanding and having this transformational experience with the living Jesus on a daily basis. And I just thank the Lord for what I learned from this quotation I shared with you and from other books that I've been trying to uh, inspire you to read. I know people are incredibly busy, but I believe it's a great mistake if, if people neglect great books. I've talked to you also about the fact that there's a film of my life story that's now also available on a website uh, known as Vision, Vision TV. But I'd be thrilled. I've got quite a few of these sitting around to send you the DVD of my life story, George, for real. What is it? You'll just travel with me to many different countries of the world. You'll travel with me. I thought I turned my phone off, but somehow I failed to do that. And um, we'll visit the ship and you'll visit uh, Mexico and Spain, where I first lived. At 60 years ago, my wife and I moved from Spain to the UK. So next year is the 60th anniversary of our movement, our organization. We're looking forward to some kind of celebration. So it would be a real blessing to get this film. There is a follow-up film called George Uncut, because as we did this footage traveling all over the world, especially in Nepal uh, and Singapore, I felt some of the footage was uh, was left out because we wanted to keep it a limited uh, number of minutes, the actual film. And so there's a second film. If you have seen George for real, I'd love to send to you called George Uncut. Again, there's an interview with Peter Maiden, with Lawrence Tong. I think you'll really find it of interest. And some of you that are already linked with us, if you could ever use these items to give away to others, especially this new climate change uh, uh, gospel track, gospel leaflet, Christian leaflet that I've just written, uh, we would certainly, certainly like to send it to you. So thanks for being with us again. Again, there may be a little bit of a, a miss over a week or two, but maybe during that time you could look at some of the older blogs that you can find, of course, on my, on my website georgeverwer.com. Uh, I can flash that up as well. Uh, there's all kinds of other material uh, on that website. And some of the older blogs, even from years ago, and how thankful I am for my webmaster, Brooke Haynes, who uh, puts a lot of time into georgeverwer.com. God bless you and learn how to keep that positive attitude, to deal with those challenging emotions, and to be a transformed person. God bless you.